Hello nieces, hello nephews, it's your Uncle Chad is here and welcome back to my YouTube channel where we do unbiased technical analysis. And guys, after that choppy day yesterday, Uncle mentioned to you guys the price action was not bearish because we was, this was yesterday's price action because it was just based in, under resistant. And then we got that big, nice, beautiful gap up, okay? It kind of gave us a crap, gap and crap. However, Double bottom, look like a double bottom. No coincidence where it bounced twice. Right at Uncle 23.6, we trace my level at 367.85-ish. Okay guys, you know my levels, they're not gonna be 100% accurate. I'm not Miss Cleo, I can't see the future. I'm not gonna argue with people because I'm off about a few cents. Okay, I can't see the future, I'm not a market maker, but guys, look at that, double bottom. All right, we zoom out here. You can see, got that, you know, last week's beautiful volatility. All right, yesterday's chop. But overall, we're making uh, high highs and higher lows. So it's possible, we zoom out here looking at this 15 minute chart, it's possible that we get more upside. Uncle would be a lot more bearish if we can lose that 367.85 level, okay? I'll be a lot more bearish. Now let's go to that daily chart all right daily daily chart look where it rejected i got that yellow line that i mentioned to you guys yesterday that was around a 374.5 level okay 15 minute chart we got it rejecting and dropping all right uh lost that 374.5 level and it just dropped all the way down to that 367.85 level it went as low as 367.53 and these are you know when it market was dropping these are all alerted in uncle's discord all alerted Beautiful, beautiful trade. So if you guys are looking for a profitable trading community, please consider joining Uncle's Discord. But other than that, guys, um, you know, beautiful. I mean, even though this is a red candle, even though it's a red candle, it is still technically an up day from the previous day. And it technically held that multi-year trend. I'll make the multi-year trend line thicker. That's from October, uh, excuse me, September 2020 low to October 2020 low to the June low. Guys, we recaptured it. We officially recaptured that multi-year trend line, okay? And we got some strong bounces from that 23.6 retracement level from August high down to October 13th low, okay? Price action is still not showing bearish to me. However, you know how Uncle does it. I use my, you know, my channel to, to identify trade setups for us to trade, guys, unbiasedly, and I'll give you a bull case scenario and a bear case scenario because why I think it's important for us to, you know, be ready for either scenario. All right. I'm sorry I can't give you guys confirmation bias, but I feel like if I'm just honest with you guys unbiasedly, I feel like that would be more helpful and God willing lead to my viewers, my discord members and all that to more profitability. Okay. So heading into tomorrow. As long as this multi-year trend capture, we, we, we recaptured it today. As long as it holds, support for it tomorrow is at 371. As long as it holds, 374 is the next target. That's based on this yellow trend line again. We rejected, well, we gapped above it, but it could not hold. So we need to clear that 374. That's the next big level that I want to see captured, all right? And that should put up, upside targets in play. I do got some resistance level on 376 and 378. But the critical one is at 380. All right. That's the 38.2 retracement level. And above that, I have this downtrend line around 381.8-ish. Okay. Connecting August high to September 12th high. And I'm trying to see if we can get that third touch. Obviously, if we break above 380. We cleared the 38.2 retracement level and we break out that down trend line. That would be pretty, pretty bullish. However, if you are looking to short, we are in a bear market. I don't like to short direct. I don't like to long direct. I like to, you know, play false breakouts and stuff like that. But if you are thinking of shorting direct, I would give 380 a shot, but you must respect your stop loss. Okay, you must respect your stop loss, but if I was to short direct, that's where I would give it a shot around 380, okay? So, bull case scenario, 371 must hold, clear 374, go test 380. If we test 380, 
could get an even bigger relief rally up to 385.5 than possibly 388-ish and 390. Okay? That's the bull case scenario. Okay? Remember, 371 must hold, must clear 374. However, if we drop back below 371 and we lose that 367.85 level, which held twice today, intraday, that's bearish, guys. False breakout. Okay? You guys remember. We don't want I don't want you guys to call in bottoms. I don't want you guys calling tops. You guys, if you guys have been trading or watching my video, all right, if you've been trading with Uncle Charlie's in the Discord, if you've been watching my video on YouTube, you guys know I don't call bottoms, I don't call tops, and I encourage you guys to not call bottoms and tops neither. Okay? If we are gonna if spy is gonna reach a bottom, I want to see a false breakdown setup. If it's truly the bottom, you don't have to catch the bottom. There will be more opportunities. For, for you to bet to the upside if it's truly the bottom does it make sense and if it's truly the top there will be opportunities for you to short to the downside if it's truly the top all i'm saying is we're in relief rally mode watch for the false breakout scenario before you guys try to short it okay that's just my advice so false breakout scenario would be losing 371 and 367.85 should trigger more downside down to 364.5-ish. Got the June low, of course, 362 to 363 zone. And, of course, 360 to 359 zone. That's 200-week moving average. Okay, guys? Below 371 and 367.85. Bearish. As long as it holds, I want to see it test that 374.5 level. Clear it to trigger more upside. Okay? Our uncle's going to keep it very simple for you guys today all right moving on to triple q triple q had the perfect rejection from uncle i got you see this you know blue down channel right here i got a perfect rejection guys perfect rejection from that resistant line okay and we were not able to close above that 23.6 retracement level which is that uh 273 it's above it it's well above it and after market now it's a good sign for bulls but you know you guys, if you guys like use volume, like I use the volume indicator, you guys know most of the, the biggest volume take place, not in pre-market or after market, but during the market. So we'll see at market open. Plus I trade con option contracts anyways. I can't trade options pre or after market. So um, we'll see what SPY open, uh, excuse me, what triple Q opens. If it opens above 273 tomorrow, that's bullish. Got a level here, the blue trend line. All right, breakout level is at 276, okay? Triple Q breaks 276. That's breakout mode. Very, very bullish, and it could trigger a multi-day rally, guys. Multi-day rally. The breakout mode is bullish, okay? RSI, look, RSI on the daily chart. It's not oversold. It's not overbought. It has plenty of room to go to the upside, okay? So, above 273, bullish. Needs to clear 274 to trigger more upside, okay? Got a gap around 279-ish. And then let's see, we can get to um, 284. That's a big critical level that I had. That's a 38.2 retracement level. Okay? Now, to get bearish, it got to drop back below that 273 level. It closed below that 273 level. I'm just a little worried because it is above it, you know, after market. But we'll see what, like I said, we'll see where it opens tomorrow. So, below 273, bearish. Next, suppose around 269-ish. Held today. That 269 level held. Keep in mind, that's June low. June low held today. So I would get a lot more bearish below 273, and if June low fails, 269, that'll trigger some level down to 267-ish, 264-ish, uh, 262-ish, and more downside target, okay? Bottom line, above 273, bullish, below 273, bearish. Watch for the setup, false breakouts, false breakdowns, all that good stuff, okay? And Tesla, all right, look at where Tesla rejected from, right from that 78.6 retracement level. All right, I had a level around 229.9 to 230-ish. That's a 78.6 retracement level. I have fibs from uh, May low all the way up to August high, okay? Uh, and, 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 you know, markets clearly respected it, and it dropped, all right? So it's currently around 223.35. Bull case needs to clear 225 and clear 230, all right? No if, ands, or but. It needs to clear those levels to be bullish to trigger more upside up to 237. I got this white line. I got a couple of lines, actually. Yeah, this green line. First of all, this green line right here. Let me change it to blue. I'll change it to blue. This was actually mentioned by one. I, I hope I get this right, but this was mentioned by a viewer 
all the way back from March 2021, connects to May 13, 2021, okay? And, and we had a lot of touches, many touches, okay? Almost tested that today and rejected it, all right? So I want to see above 230, above 225 and 230, I'll be bullish on Tesla, okay? Next to pause at 218. Uh, well, I got 222 and then 218.3-ish. Those are support levels. If they fail, 216, 213, 211.5, 208.6, and then 206.8 are all in play. Let the price actually guide you guys. Uncle's strategy is simple. I know the levels. I know the setups. I just trade it unbiasedly. Now, let's end this with the option flow. Filter for 500K premiums or above. Look at that. Nothing really sticking out to Uncle. However... We did get, it's a split type. It's not very aggressive. I don't really pay attention to split, but the size order was over 5K. You know, October 28th date. Almost a million dollars in premium, a little over 800. So that's not very aggressive. You know what I mean? So nothing really sticking out to me, but you know, 65% in the calls nonetheless. So big money's overall bullish on the S&P 500 today. Let's move on to Triple Q. And this is the opposite. We got an opposite. 91% in the puts. Must be the Apple. We had some Apple. You know, I cover the news on in my Discord as well. Got a newsroom. Apple cut. iPhone 14 Plus production. That's two weeks after its debut. What the heck? And, and I guess big money. That made big money bearish on Triple Q. Because, you know, uh, Apple is pretty heavy weighted in the Triple Q. And it's a market moving stock. Uh, but you see here, 18.7 million? Over 5,000 in size. Okay, November 18th. So, so still seeing some big, big money. Coming in for puts bearish on the triple Q. Holy moly. Tesla. Let's get to Tesla. Boom. Filter for 500k premium. 71% in the puts. Anything stick out to Uncle? Anything stick out to you guys? Nothing really for me. But overall bearish on the Tesla. Okay, guys. So that's what I have for you guys today. Please don't click away. Listen. Please, if you guys want to support this channel, please consider joining my Substack or my Discord channel. It would mean the world to Uncle Charnis. And I just want to be able to serve you guys, especially with the Discord, because the Discord, I can serve you guys throughout the day and update you guys on what's happening. Let's make this money together. But if not, it's all good. I just appreciate you guys for being here. Peace.